Kirsten Cinema is in the news yet again. Conservative Democratic Senator Kirsten Cinema is more concerned with sucking up to the GOP and her corporate donors than doing what's right for her own constituents. That means that it's time for another episode of The Dumb and the Feckless. One of my prayers is that the Republicans will take back their party. Things keep dripping out, drip, 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 and the truth comes out. The truth did not come out in a recent op-ed that Cinema penned for the Washington Post. She tried to make the argument for maintaining the legislative filibuster in the Senate that requires 60 senators to vote in favor of a piece of legislation in order for it to pass into law. Now, her arguments here are hollow, we're gonna explain why. Let me give you a few excerpts of what she had to say. It's no secret that I oppose eliminating the Senate's 60 vote threshold. I held the same view during three terms in the US House and said the same after I was elected to the Senate in 2018. If anyone expected me to reverse my position because my party now controls the Senate, they should know that my approach to legislating in Congress is the same whether in the minority or majority. And then she says this, is my job secure? Can I expand my business? Can we afford college? What about health care? When can I retire? Is my community safe? Meanwhile, much of Washington's focus is on a Senate rule requiring 60 votes to advance most legislation. But maybe, Cinema, just maybe the reason why the focus is on that legislative filibuster is because all of the issues that she listed there are issues that the Senate will never do anything about unless we do away with the legislative filibuster. The Senate is where legislation goes to die. She knows that, she knows that. So while she pretends to care about the issues that matter to her constituents, she simultaneously supports an arbitrary rule within the Senate that blocks all the legislation necessary to actually respond to the very real problems that Americans are having right now. Now she also writes, Arizonans expect me to do what I promised when I ran for the House and the Senate to be independent like Arizona and to work with anyone to achieve lasting results. Lasting results rather than temporary victories destined to be reversed, undermining the certainty that America, America's families and employers depend on. So I figured maybe it's worth going back to watch her ads, her campaign ads for the US House and also the US Senate. Let's start with the US House. These guys don't get it. They're more focused on dictating women's personal health care decisions, like birth control, than getting our economy back on track. I'll bring people together and work with both parties without sacrificing my progressive values. Like I did when I took on Governor Brewer to stop cuts in local schools and protect children's health care. I'm Kirsten Cinema. I sponsored this ad because the only way to change Washington is to change the people we send there. Now, of course, she's willing to sacrifice her progressive values when she does a thumbs down vote on a $15 an hour minimum wage. Which, by the way, she did after she tapped Senator Mitch McConnell's shoulder to get his attention so he watched the whole situation go down, right? But she would never compromise her progressive values, James. No, never. I've never seen her do it. <laughs> progressive values. Okay, I want to make just one quick comment on that ad. Uh, she said, These guys don't get it. And you saw Rush Limbaugh, then you saw John McCain. Just last week, she wrote into Politico telling them, I want to be the next John McCain. Yep. Literally, you saw it in the ad, these guys don't get John McCain, doesn't get it. Now she's bragging all over Washington, I'm gonna be the new John McCain, I'm gonna be the new Republican senator from Arizona, just like John McCain, and I'm gonna define my party all the time. She didn't say she wants to be the new Republican senator from Arizona. Number one, it sounded awful a lot like that as she was bragging about how much she loves John McCain. Number two, best case scenario is she's saying, no, I will defy my party all the way through. Which then makes you the other party, by the way. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point of defying your party nonstop, right? So, but, but, but in this case, I just want to point out the hypocrisy between the ad. Effective. And, <laughs> yeah, effective, please. And who she actually is. She's actually one of the grossest politicians I've seen in my lifetime. And that's saying a lot because she came in as super left. And then has become literally the most right wing center in the country, even more right wing than Joe Manchin. So 
she says that she will not sacrifice her progressive values. We've already seen how that has played out in real time. She certainly has sacrificed her progressive values. Then she runs for the Senate. This is a newer political ad. Let's see what she claims she stood for. Arizonans can't afford their health care. Some people don't have it. Those who do have it are paying too much. Kirsten Cinema says end the partisan nonsense and protect Arizonans. It's why Kirsten Cinema voted to stop a new age tax on health care for Arizonans age 50 and over and protect coverage for 2.8 million Arizonans with pre existing conditions. You've got to bring people together to do what's right. So what good is it to vote in favor of legislation that has no chance of actually passing into law when you also support the legislative filibuster that literally prevents it from passing into Like I don't care what your vote is if you know that your vote is nothing more than performative nonsense. It's not gonna make a difference if the Senate maintains the Senate filibuster. But anyway, Jenk, you were right about what you said on the show yesterday. Jenk mentioned how even if Joe Manchin is pressured, successfully pressured into agreeing to doing away with the filibuster, cinema is likely to be a problem. And you're right. She wrote this op-ed in the Washington Post. It was published today. She is not willing to do away with the filibuster. And I believe her on that. Yeah, I believe her way more than I believe Manchin. In an ironic twist, right? Because she's so incredibly deceitful overall in politics. So let's just note the deceit in that last ad too. She's like, I was protecting people above the age of 55 and their health care. Uh, Joe Biden says in his agenda, which I don't believe, but he claims that he would lower the Medicare eligibility age. So that would affect people either 55 or 60, they'd be able to get Medicare quicker, right? So the same exact group that she's talking about in her ad. She's like, no, I won't end the filibuster. So you have no chance of being able to help those older Americans get health care. You have no chance. And because of me, because Manchin in the corrupt call that he had with the donors, the billionaire donors, even there, he's look, his real positions, he tells the donors. Mm -hmm. Whatever he says publicly is total nonsense, okay? And he's telling the donors that he actually could move a little bit on the filibuster. He's saying, I'm not gonna get rid of it completely to the donors because the donors don't want him to get rid of it. Those donors are like, you better keep the filibuster. And why? Because they wanna make sure $15 minimum wage doesn't pass, progressive priorities don't pass, clean energy doesn't pass, because they're all from those dirty sectors and they make literally billions of dollars from that. So buying off people like Manchin and Cinema is actually a great investment. It's super easy to bribe them, etc. But you see Manchin is at least willing to move a little bit on the filibuster. Cinema now knowing that comes out with an op-ed saying, no, I'm not gonna move at all. And and her I believe more because she's made every signal that she's gonna switch either to an independent or to a Republican. And that she's gonna kill the entire Democratic agenda single handedly by not moving on the filibuster. And so, um, and when I started warning about that, honestly, months ago, people were like, oh, Jank, you're overreacting, and cinema is still, she'll be a de good Democrat at the end. And come on, voting rights, of course, every Democrat agrees with voting rights. And Kristen Cinema does this ridiculous kabuki theater where she's like, oh, yeah, I'm for the For the People Act. But I'm gonna kill it single handedly by not getting rid of the filibuster, I'm for it. But the problem is, is as always the press, right? Because I was talking to a friend about this the other day. If the bulls and the pistons are playing, to use an old school reference, and the pistons foul the living crap out of Michael Jordan and all the bulls, is it really the pistons fault or the refs fault, right? Because the, the competitors will do what they're gonna do to try to gain an advantage. It's supposed to be the refs who call it out. And, and honestly guys, mainstream media, uh, I, they never answer real questions, right? I mean, they have these uh, shows of they're, they're supposed to hold each other accountable, they're jokes, right? And so my question to you guys is, do you really think that the corporate donors of Mansion and Cinema have no effect on their votes? Or do you think they have little effect? No. Or do you think they have a ton of effect? Because the rest of the country think the donors, 93% of Americans believe donors, uh, the politicians are their donors instead of their voters, okay? But in the press, in the mainstream press, they treat it, even though we have the tape, we have the tape kissing the ass of the donors, you know, Joe Manchin doing it, right? And we have all of the records of all their checks, et cetera, let alone the dark money, right? And the corporate media in its entirety are like, no, I don't see it. I don't see it. I think they're, oh, oh what is Krista Cinema's principles? Zero, she has none. No, Jake, I mean, the intercept 
as we had covered last week, obtained leaked audio of Joe Manchin's meeting with billionaire donors, a group of billionaire donors who refer to themselves as no labels, right? Because they don't care if it's Democrat or Republican in charge. Yeah. What they care about is ensuring that their money talks. And their money certainly talks to the likes of Joe Manchin and other corporate Democrats and Republicans, right? So the reason why we know that the bipartisan argument we're getting from lawmakers like Manchin and Cinema is nothing more than BS is because just listen to this audio. Manchin, just to give you context, I wanna remind you all of what he said and what the context was. He's like, uh, look guys, uh, the left is, they're right, they're right. Uh, we need to point to something that passed in a bipartisan way in the Senate so we can maintain the filibuster. And so he suggested that these billionaires buy off or entice Republican lawmakers so they vote in favor of the January 6th commission to investigate what happened in the Capitol, right? And so he specifically focused on Republican lawmakers who are not seeking reelection. And he suggested that billionaires offer something that's literally illegal, it's against the law. Listen. Right now what I'm asking for, I need to go back, I need to find three more Republican, good Republican senators that'll vote for the uh, commission. So the least we can tamp them down to what people say, Republicans won't even do the simple if. The common sense of basically voting to do a commission that was truly bipartisan. Uh, you know, so once the people, and it really, it, it, it just really uh, uh, emboldens the uh, far left saying, I show you, I, you know, uh, how's that bipartisan working for you now, Joe? Uh, those are the hard things. That's where I need help, Dan. That's where I need help, man, because I know that nothing's gonna pass in a bipartisan way. We literally have to buy off these politicians. So please do that. And so what did he suggest? That these billionaires offer Roy Blunt, a Republican, a job after he's out of Congress, right? After he's out of the Senate, in order to entice him and basically bribe him to vote in favor of the January 6th Commission to give the American people the illusion of successful bipartisanship in the Senate. It's BS, it's BS. Manchin knows it, Cinema knows it, I know it, you know it, the American people know it, everyone knows it. But the mainstream media didn't cover that story. And they keep talking about the infrastructure negotiations, the bipartisan infrastructure negotiations, as if like there's actual headway. Like they're, they're, these negotiations are actually leading to some sort of um, advancement in a bill that both parties can agree on. No, no. The only thing that they're likely gonna agree on is not raising taxes on the wealthy. Yeah, honestly, the mainstream media is ruining this country because that it's impossible to argue that that's not an interesting story. And corruption ranks in the top two of issues that Americans care most about in almost every poll. And yet, magically, the mainstream media just can't find a way to talk about it. It's on tape. It's on tape, him talking to the donors and saying all these incredibly corrupt things. Look, guys. Greg Sargent of the Washington Post had an interesting article about Kristen Cinema's op-ed. And he said, Cinema gives away the game and he's debating her ideas. And in, and he makes a great point, You know, Cinema said, well look, we shouldn't do anything until we all agree. Both the Republicans and the Democrats agree. And Sargent points out, too late. They've already passed 14 laws in 14 different states, let alone nearly 400 that were proposed in 48 different states. But the 14 have already passed limiting voting rights. So if you don't act, the Republicans already did. So that totally destroys your argument. But even that misunderstands it because it's not a debate. She doesn't care about your arguments and she doesn't care how right you are. Notice Manchin in that call told the donors, hey listen, the far left is making this argument that is basically unassailable, right? They're definitely right. So what I need you to do is to give me a fig leaf. So he's saying, mm -hmm. Let's pretend to like, let's do the January 6th commission so that, so why? So we can actually do the January 6th commission? No, he explains to the donors so that we can make sure that we preserve the filibuster so that you guys can preserve your, preserve your tax breaks. It's right there. It's disgusting. Okay, he doesn't give a damn about the January 6th commission. He doesn't care about your ideas or the debate or the principle. And at one point he tells him, look, you know, some of you could, you know, talk to Roy Blunt about his 
future job prospects, basically, right? And so and Roy Blunt's retiring, he's a Republican, and he's basically saying, you guys are all billionaires, why don't you just hire him, just bribe him, just give him a million dollars afterwards. It, it makes him perfect sense, he doesn't say a million dollars, I'm paraphrasing, but please listen to the call, or just read the exact quotes, they intercepted a brilliant job in exposing it, right? And so all of the mainstream media sees this and goes, nope, nope, they're having a principal debate. But, but we all we all heard it, we all right. heard it, right? Isn't that amazing? And then they wonder why they get called fake news and why the right wing lost their minds thinking that a satanic cult is more likely than politicians being honest. Yeah, yeah, no, but look, and that's not to justify conspiracy theories and all that other stuff. But it does speak to why people believe the conspiracy theories they believe and why they refuse to accept any evidence to the contrary, especially when it's coming from legacy media sources. The same legacy media sources that very clearly withhold important stories that would call out government corruption. Yeah, right. I'm gonna say last things here. Um, so if you're wondering, wait, why did Cinema bother running as very progressive? And at the time, she would talk nonstop about how she was LGBTQ and all that stuff, right? And then she turns into this like mega right winger uh, later, because before she was running in the House, where she was running in a blue district. And the bluer the district, the more you want to pretend to be progressive in cinema's case. But when you go to run statewide in Arizona, she wants to pretend to be purple, right? But I don't know how long she's going to stay in the Senate. Either she, she, I don't think she can win a Democratic primary, so she's going to have to switch parties, and she knows that. Mm -hmm. Or she's going to retire, retire and cash those checks that Manch is talking about. He's like, why don't you pay off Roy Blunt? Well, what do you think they're gonna do with Cinema when she retires? They're gonna give her millions of dollars. Probably Cinema thinks you run progressive in a blue district, you run purple in a purple state like Arizona, and then when you're about to leave to cash in for millions of bucks, you go full right wing so you can tell the donors, remember, you owe me big time. I saved you billions of dollars in taxes and regulation and wages. So now give me a couple million bucks. It's, I'd be very surprised if she didn't do some version of that play. She's already in the middle of doing it and we just showed it to you with receipts. Yes. Yet the mainstream media is like, I don't see it. Okay, last one goes to our audience. We'll make you see the silver haired dragon is a member of ours. We do the show together, I love your comments, tyt.com slash join to become a member and be part of the show. He wrote in, let's not forget that this is probably not just cinema and mansion. I have no doubt that they're just following Biden's and a number of the other top corporate Democrats wishes. If they both fell in line, I'm sure there are at least 10 others who could step up as the sacrificial lambs. I mean, you're definitely right about the 10 others. A lot of our focus has been on mansion and cinema because they go out of their way, like they're, they're just vociferous, right, in, in their lies about bipartisanship. But are there other corporate Democrats in the Senate that would certainly step up to the plate if Manchin and Cinema refused to? Yes, you're right about that. And they hide behind them, etc. But when we, by the way, and literally the Young Turks audience did this, when we expose them on the $15 minimum wage and we forced a vote on that, yes, we did that. Bernie Sanders didn't want to do it and he wound up doing it. By the way, Bernie again caved on another issue, that's another story. But anyways, and when you guys did that, if, if you guys didn't sign the petition and send the videos, there's no way that vote would have happened. And, and when that happened, hey, we found out it wasn't just Manchin and Cinema. The eight corporate Democrats voted against higher wages. They were lying the whole time as a party, pretending to be in favor of $15 minimum wage, and we exposed that they weren't. And so, you look, one of our members, actually, almost all of our members, and that's why I read the comments, is smarter than the entirety of the people whose job is to cover politics. So nobody at the New York Times and Washington Post figured that out. Nobody figured out cinema's strategy of running in the House and the Senate. Nobody figured out any of this, even though The Intercept has the tapes of it, etc. Nah, nah, no, corporate media supports corporate politicians and this is how we all get robbed. So an absolute final thing on this is that if cinema really holds on this, and I think she probably will. Guys, you're, you're I'm not sure anybody's getting it. It's. Biden's term is over. Over. The whole thing is over. All he did was pass COVID relief, which anyone would have passed. And then his term ended. FDR 2.0. Hilarious. <laughs> and and oh, it, it, Mickey talked about how, wait, you know, Biden 
is not in favor of getting rid of the film boss. That's right, his current position. We're yelling at Manchin in cinema. Joe Biden 2.0, <laughs> he's, he's not in favor of getting rid of the filibuster. No, Jenk, but don't it's worry. Absurd. Don't worry. It's he absurd. Doesn't, he doesn't need to get rid of it because he can convince Republicans in the Senate to work with him with his amazing persuasion skills. How, how could anybody be that stupid? No, that's not stupid. And I'm not talking about Joe Biden, although that's certainly fair. I'm talking about the media. Like you think that there's gonna be 10 Republicans that will vote for voting rights? That is an absolute impossibility. Yep. If you think it's impossible, you don't know anything about news and you should instantly resign your position. And yeah. and these guys are, they, they lie to the country as a regular course. Politicians are not honest. They, they serve their donors 100%. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.